year, we were hearing from the Gospel of Mark. Now we're going to be hearing from the Gospel of Luke. And we'll do it for about a year, and then we'll hear from Matthew, and then we'll just go around with you. How about that? But here we are, with a new day, a new season, new symbols, which we will draw much meaning from in this season of Advent, leading to Christmas, that leads to a fifth and today we start in an interesting place. <coughs> For the gospel readings, in all their wisdom, have planted us this morning at the beginning of the new year by hearing a story about the end. Luke chapter 21. Jesus talking about the end time. What the scholars call the great eschaton. The end of the age, the final judgment when the heavens themselves will be shaken by the massive transition that God is bringing to all things. And it's kind of a scary place to begin. Did you hear some of the warnings upon us from Luke? People will faint from fear and foreboding, it says. Heaven and earth will pass away, be on guard, so that that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a Pray that you may have the strength to escape. What a gentle and reassuring way to start the new year off. Right? Now why would we start here? Why begin with this? I mean, especially now as we have our faces set towards Christmas and the nativity and gentle Jesus soon lying in the hay. Well, our first reading of what for today might be helpful for us. Prophet Jeremiah. For Jeremiah, right, was one who was proclaiming the word of God hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus, but one of the major marks, one of the major themes of Jeremiah's work was that Jeremiah was wrestling profoundly with what it meant that he was living in a world that was falling apart. For he wrote during this time when the people were being kicked out of their homeland, God's people, the chosen people, were being exiled, famine, loss. They thought the covenant itself was being broken. The family tree was literally being cut down. And the question upon them was, what does this mean for us? Where do we go from here? And indeed, there was much uncertainty in their world. But by the time we get to this 33rd chapter of Jeremiah that we hear this morning on this first Sunday of Advent, we hear a proclamation of something hopeful in the midst of uncertainty. For Jeremiah proclaims here that God is not only a God who knows when the world is falling apart, and who not only sticks around them when things aren't looking good, but it also proclaims that God is a God who desires to do something about what's caused it all in the first place. It says, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, and I will fulfill my promise. A new branch is going to grow out of this dead stump, and that branch is going to be a new way, a way of justice, and righteousness, a way of God making things right in the world. When Prophet Jeremiah uses these words, justice and righteousness, they evoke this idea that God, from courtroom to street corner, is the one who is holding the world accountable. Not so that we might drown in the hopelessness of the error of our ways, so that somehow we might address what needs addressing. And somehow God will recreate our most important relationships, reform us to be not only in right relationship with God, but in right relationship with one another and all people and even all the world. And in this season of Advent, 
in this season of the coming of our Lord, the imminent arrival of God in our midst, that same movement of rightness and justice and healing is afoot, and we proclaim that it will be made known in our courtrooms and our street corners, on our assembly lines and at our dining room tables, God is making things right in these places, and even and perhaps especially in our most difficult places in the world. Like at our southern border crossings and its tear gas children. And all of our brutal uses of force that are serving only to legitimize our collective fear of fellow beloved human beings. We may be ready for a tender heart of holiday here before. But the reality is, God is sending us a Christ who is more interested in making things right in the world than making us comfortable. For God indeed will not cease in making things right, even if that means we must change as well. For even when the end seems to be upon us, even when we don't know how to change the things in the world that seem to be beyond our control, even when we don't know where to turn next, that's exactly where God's new beginnings are taking hold of us. For this is the advent of promise in which we live. Christ <coughs> is coming. God will make things right, even if that means shaking us up a bit. So in the words of the Gospel writer Luke, lift up your heads, dear people, for our redemption is.